Hey there, it's Kevin Kennedy and welcome to day number 24 of Learn Fusion 360 in 30 days. By the end of this tutorial, you'll be able to model a pumpkin in the sculpt environment. We'll take a look at how to use the control point spline, how to select through faces, how to use the T-spline revolve tool, and how to thicken a T-spline model. To get started, we're going to need to create the silhouette of the pumpkin with the spline tool, and then we'll enter the sculpt environment and revolve the T-spline around the center axis. Now, I'll start off by creating a new component by selecting New Component from the Assemble drop-down menu. And before I click OK, I'll type out Pumpkin for the name. Creating a new component before we do any work will simply help prepare for the future just in case we want to duplicate the pumpkin or insert the object into another assembly file. I'm now going to select Create Sketch in the toolbar, and then I'll select the right plane. To get the spline command, I'll go to the Sketch drop-down menu, I'll find the Spline Flyout folder, and I'll select the Control Point Spline, which is a newer feature in Fusion 360 and I think you'll find it's a little bit easier to control than the fit point spline. I'm going to start by clicking in the middle just above the center origin, as this is where that bottom cavity of the pumpkin will be. And I'm just going to add three or four points by clicking in the rough shape of a pumpkin. Then, you'll see that the control point spline allows us to simply move these points around. So it's a little bit simpler to use than the fit point spline, which can only be adjusted by dragging the spline handles. So I'm just going to move these points around until I'm happy and it looks close enough to the pumpkin silhouette. And if you really wanted to get a specific profile shape, you could import a reference image and trace over the shape with the spline tool. Once I'm done with the spline tool, I'll hit stop sketch in the toolbar. And before I forget about it, I'm going to rename the sketch pumpkin by double clicking on it in the Fusion 360 browser, as it's a good habit to get into, even on these quick, smaller projects. Now we need to enter the T-spline or sculpt environment. And you'll see that the only way we can enter the sculpt environment is by selecting create form. So the easiest way to do this is simply selecting it in the toolbar. Otherwise, the sculpt environment does not show up in your workspace's drop-down list. Now, after selecting Create Form, you'll be in the Sculpt workspace, and we will need to select the Revolve command from the Create drop-down menu. Once the Revolve dialog box opens up, you'll notice that it's very similar to the Revolve command in the Model workspace with the exception that we'll be creating a T-spline body, which is full of faces, and it's not one solid body. First, I'll need to select the side profile of the pumpkin that we just created, and next, you'll see that we have to select a center axis. So in this scenario, we'll simply use the center axis from our origin, but you could always reference a line that you created or a number of different construction axes that you can create in Fusion. After I select the center axis, you'll see it's already given me a preview of the shape. And before we click OK in the Revolve dialog box, we'll want to change a few more settings. If you've watched the previous two sculpting videos, then you've heard me talk before about the key to success when using the sculpt environment. And that is that the more faces you have, the more control you'll have over your shape. So we'll want to increase the number of faces here in order to have a little bit more control over how we shape this pumpkin. You'll see that I can create new faces two ways, either by dragging this blue slider around or by typing out the exact number of faces that I would like in the dialog box. Now I'm going to set the number of faces to 9, and right above that you'll see that we can change the spacing to curvature or uniform. 
Now, uniform will ensure that all of the faces are a uniform size, whereas the curvature selection means the size of the faces will adapt to the shape of the object. So for most projects, you'll find that the curvature setting will be more useful. So I'll go ahead and leave it set to curvature for now. For the type, you'll see that we can change the angle to which our shape is revolved around. And we want our pumpkin to be solid all the way around, so I'll leave it set to full. Next, you'll see that we can set the number of faces in the other direction. And again, I can either drag the blue slider around or type a number in the dialog box. Now I'm going to go ahead and type out 14 for the number of faces. Just below that is the symmetry option. Now pumpkins are never exactly symmetrical, but to help us make the individual bulges, we're going to turn on the symmetry for now, and then later we'll go ahead and turn it off and we can individually change parts of the pumpkin. So after I set the symmetry to circular, I'll change the number of faces to three, giving us just a bit more control. And then I will click OK to confirm all of these changes. Now that we have the overall shape, we'll want to push some of these faces back, creating different ripples that appear around the outside of a pumpkin. I'm going to look at it from the top plane, and then while holding down the shift key, I'm going to start to select one of the edges that has symmetry applied to it, as indicated by these bright green lines. And I will start with the second edge, and I'll keep selecting them until the bottom edge before it starts to wrap underneath the pumpkin. So once I have them selected, you'll see that all the other symmetry lines are selected as well. And we're going to have to right click and select edit form. If you're new to sculpting in Fusion 360, then be sure to check out my other short video where I cover what all of these edit form icons mean. I'll link to that below in the video description. For now, we'll select the single axis direction arrow and I'm just going to push it back a little bit. If I want even more control, then I can type a number in the dimension box. So I'll type out 16 and click OK. At this point, we're done with the symmetry, so we'll have to clear it out before we go any further. To clear the symmetry feature, simply select Clear Symmetry from the Symmetry drop-down list. And now you'll see that we no longer have any of our green symmetry lines. Now the last thing we need to do is create the stem of the pumpkin. I'm going to zoom way in on the pumpkin shape and double click on the edge here because double clicking will automatically select the entire edge. I'll right click and select edit form. And I'm going to select the universal scaling icon or the center circle. Now before I do anything, I'm going to hold down the Option key on my Mac. So if you're on Windows, be sure to hold down the Alt key. And then we'll drag the center circle in about halfway. I'm going to let go of the Option key, then hold the Option key down once again and drag the center in a bit further. Then with the Option slash Alt key held down, I'm going to grab the top single axis arrow and I'm going to drag it up. So you'll see that holding down the Option Alt key is creating these new faces for us so it doesn't mess up all the surrounding faces. Whereas if we didn't hold that down, if we moved any of these things around, it would drag all the faces with it. To make the stem a little bit more tapered, I'll select the Universal Scaling icon or the Center Circle and I'll drag it in a bit. This time making sure that I do not have the Option Alt key selected. You can also use the sliders to give it a bit of an angle. And we can select and hold on the planar direction square. And move that around to give it a more realistic and not so perfect appearance. The last thing I'll do is make this pumpkin even more realistic by messing up some of the symmetry. Now I'm going to look at the pumpkin from one of the side views. 
and then I'm going to hit Control plus one on the keyboard, which will change the appearance to a box display mode. And the main advantage of this box display mode is it makes it easier to select faces of the organic shape, and it will also run a lot smoother, especially if you have Fusion running on an older computer. Now we'll want to set a selection filter, so I'll head up to the selection drop-down menu, and for the selection priority, I'll click on select face priority, which will make sure that we only select faces. Now if I click and drag with my mouse to create a selection window, you'll see that we have one problem, which is that it doesn't select all of the faces on the top of the pumpkin, especially on the other side. So the easiest thing to do in this situation is to activate the select through selection filter, which will automatically select the faces on the other sides when we use the selection window. So after activating select through, if I try to do the selection again, this time you'll see that it did in fact work and it selected the entire top. So I can now right click and select edit form and I can drag the rotation slider a bit and move the planar direction square around to make this pumpkin a little bit more unique. After messing with the faces a bit, you can click OK and then you can hit control plus three to revert back to the normal smooth mode. Now to wrap up this tutorial, there are a few quick things we'll want to do. First off, we'll want to fill the gap in the stem of the pumpkin. So in some T-spline scenarios, we would be able to use the fill hole modify command, but unfortunately, if you move your stem around, it's going to cause some intersecting T-spline errors, which won't let us convert this model to a solid body. Therefore, I'll make sure my selection filters are reset to normal, and I'll double click to select on the stem's edge. I'll right click and select edit form, and I'm going to hold down the option alt key and drag the universal scale icon just a bit so it rounds over the edges. I'll release the option alt key, and then I will hold down the option alt key once again and drag the universal scale icon in further. And this time I'll go ahead and type out zero in the dimension box which will close off the top of the stem. And then I can click OK to confirm the results. As of now, this T-spline model doesn't have any thickness to it. So before we hit finish form to convert it to a solid body, we'll use the thicken command located under the modify dropdown list. Then I'll have to select the T-spline body. I'll change the thicken type to soft, and I'll type out four millimeters for the thickness. If we look at the body in the Fusion 360 browser, you'll see that it's still a T-spline body. So to convert it to a solid, I'll hit finish form in the toolbar, and it may take a few seconds to convert. Then I'll turn on the section analysis to show you the thickness that we just created with the thicken command. Now that the pumpkin is a solid body, you can use the model tools to carve a design into the side, or you could double click on the sculpt icon in the timeline below to further edit the T-spline body in the sculpt workspace. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions at all about this tutorial or Fusion 360 questions in general, then be sure to comment them below. Hit that thumbs up icon if you learned something in this video and click subscribe followed by that little bell icon to be notified of more Fusion 360 tutorials.